Today I want to take a look at what happened to Aaron Burr after the duel with Alexander Hamilton. The duel itself was over. Aaron Burr shot Alexander Hamilton in the abdomen, piercing both his liver and hitting his spine. Alexander Hamilton would eventually die the next day. Aaron Burr was actually charged with murder in both the states of New Jersey and New York, and he was forced to flee to his daughter's residency in uh, South Carolina in order for things to cool a little bit um, before he was able to return from South Carolina to Philadelphia, and then to the Capitol in New York, where he was currently serving as Vice President of the United States. Now, Aaron Burr's Vice Presidency is often thought of as the last one where the second place person in terms of votes received uh, was as elected Vice President. This was the last election. Thomas Jefferson would actually amend the Constitution to allow the um, constituents or voters to select um, basically by selecting the president, you select the vice president sort of thing. And, um, he would, and Burr would leave his, his term as vice president in 1805, where he began to journey to the Western frontier. Uh, obviously the uh, Louisiana purchase had occurred, I believe in 1803, the Western expansion of the United States was beginning to happen. And there was a lot of money to be made in this Western frontier. And, just to kind of backtrack a little bit, setting setting the kind of scenes for what Burr was trying to do here, during his vice presidency, he met with a man named Anthony Mary, who was the British minister to the United States at the time. And Burr had suggested to, to the British, or Mary, that he might regain power in the Southwest, and at this time the Southwest would have been Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, those sorts of states, if the British were to contribute guns and money to his expedition. Burr offered to detach Louisiana from the United States in exchange for half a million dollars and a British fleet to protect him in the Gulf of Mexico. Mary would write a letter to back to Britain, and he would say, quote, It is clear Mr. Burr means to endeavor to be the instrument for effecting such a connection. He has told me that the inhabitants of Louisiana prefer having the protection and assistance of Great Britain. Execution of their design is only delayed by the difficulty of obtaining an assurance of protection and assistance of a foreign power. In November 1805, Burr met again with Mary and asked for the ships of the line and money from Britain. Mary informed Burr that London had not yet responded to the previous request, obviously letters back and forth could take months at a time and instead mary gave burr fifteen hundred dollars which at the time is quite a bit of money obviously those mary worked with in london had responded by this point and the british stated that they had no further interest in furthering american succession um, that would obviously change in six short years seven short years when the, the war of 1812 would happen in Burr's final meeting with Mary in 1806, Burr told Mary, with or without such support, it certainly would be made very short. Either with your support, it's going to get done easy. Without your support, I might not be able to do this. Burr was now creating and planning a full-blown rebellion against the United States. With help from a man named Herman Beinerhasset. Now, Beinerhasset lived in the northwestern regions of Virginia. Burr had stored supplies and men on an island near Parkersburg, West Virginia, modern day, and Burr would also try to recruit volunteers to enter the Spanish territory. So at this time, the Spanish territories would have been Florida, um, Texas, those sorts of areas. In New Orleans, he met with a group called the Carrillos, whose objective was to conquer Mexico itself. Mexico at this time, obviously, would have extended all the way over from Texas to Mexico. 
He had gained support in New Orleans of the Catholic bishop for his expedition into Mexico itself. He told a Spanish minister that his plans were not just Western secession from the United States, but to capture Washington, D.C. itself. Burr returned to the West in 1806 to recruit more volunteers for expedition down the Mississippi River. The governor of Ohio began to become quite suspicious of the activity on Bionarhasset's island. Ohio would have bordered West Virginia. And he ordered the militia to raid the island and seize any supplies that were on it. Bliner Hassett managed to escape the island with one boat and met Burr before beginning to head down the Mississippi River. News of what Aaron Burr was doing was beginning to show up in newspapers all throughout the United States. And the District of Attorney of Kentucky brought charges against Burr, claiming that he intended to make war with Mexico. Burr was able to get these charges dropped, however, with the help of a very upstart lawyer by the name of Henry Clay, who would obviously become pretty important in American history in the next 50 years. Without his charges being put through, the district attorney wrote President Thomas Jefferson, warning him that Burr planned to provoke a rebellion. Jefferson dismissed the accusations against Burr because they were both part of the Democratic-Republican Party. By the middle of 1806, Jefferson began to take more notice of the unrest in the West. There was a very um, big separation between the Western frontier people's mentalities and ideas on things in the, the original colonies' ideas. The district attorney, Wilkinson, sent a correspondence he had received from Burr. The man that had received the letter from Burr was General James Wilkinson, who was part of the conspiracy itself. In order to preserve his good name, Wilkinson, who was the man who received the letter, edited the letters to make it seem like he was not part of the conspiracy. So basically, he altered the letters to show his innocence and Burr's guilt. With this information, Jefferson orders Burr, ordered Burr's arrest. Burr continues his excursion down the Mississippi, but when they learned that a bounty had been placed on Burr's head, they surrendered. Burr would actually manage to escape to the wilderness, but was again recaptured and taken to Virginia, where he was to stand trial. Burr was charged with treason for assembling an armed force to take New Orleans. The case itself was controversial from the very beginning. The government was unable to provide substantial evidence to prove Burr's guilt. Chief Justice Marshall, Marshall ruled that Burr was not guilty of treason because he did not directly participate in overreact action against the government. So basically, the only evidence they had was the forged letter from um, Wilkinson, and that wasn't enough to prove that he was guilty. Historians wrote this of Burr. Burr was not guilty of treason, nor was he ever convicted, because there was no evidence. Not one credible piece of testimony, and the star witness for the prosecution had to admit that he had doctored the letter himself. Lawyer David O. Stewart provided a counter view to this. Burr's intention included acts that const const constituted the crime of treason, but in the context of 1806, the moral verdict is less clear. Neither invasion of Spanish lands nor secession from, of American territory was considered treasonous by most Americans at the time. In the view of the flu fluid boundaries of the American Southwest, combined with the widespread expectation, even President Thomas Jefferson shared this, that the U.S. might well divide into two nations. Now Burr, with his prospects of a political career quashed and creditors calling, he fled to Europe in 1808. He first traveled to Britain in order to gain support for a revolution in Mexico. He was then ordered out of the country and traveled to France where he asked support from Napoleon. He was denied and now too poor to pay for his way back to the United States. Eventually, he was able to return, where he assumed his mother's maiden name. The lasting role of Burr's life was what I've spoken about before, the Twelfth Amendment, which requires separate votes for vice president and president. This, along with his financial issues are largely the reason why he is forgotten today. I want to play a excerpt from uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda's musical Hamilton, um, and it's the portion right after the duel itself, and um, it kind of just shows the, if you've ever listened to the full musical itself, it actually begins with Burr being very reserved and very observant of what sort of tactics he wants to use politically and by the end he switched roles with alexander hamilton and become very 
outspoken and aggressive. And I think that this is a very good um, example of that. So I'm just going to play. It's like a minute and a half clip. Um, actually, it's probably like 30 seconds. It's just the last part of a song. Um, I want to thank you guys all very much for watching. Let me know what you think down below. This is a pretty controversial topic. Obviously, he was never proven guilty of any of these things. Um, but we, when you do have a delegates from foreign governments saying these sorts of things, um, I'm pretty apt to believe it. Um, let me know what you guys think. Um, if you are interested in helping out the channel, down below, if um, you ever use Amazon to do some shopping, if you use that link down below, I get a little bit of a kickback from Amazon for sending you there. Um, you don't pay anything extra, I just get like 1% of what you, what you spend. Um, so yeah, if you wanted to support the channel, that's a good way to do it. Thank you all very much for watching, and uh, enjoy the little clip here at the end. I strike him right between his ribs I walk towards him but I am ushered away They row him back across the Hudson I get a drink I hear wailing in the street Somebody tells me you'd better hide They say Angelica and Eliza Were both at his side when he died Death doesn't discriminate Between the sinners and the saints It takes and it takes and it takes History obliterates And every picture it paints It paints me and all my mistakes when Alexander aimed at the sky He may have been the first one to die But I'm the one who paid for it I survived, but I paid for it Now I'm the villain in your history I was too young and blind to see I should have known I should have known the world was wide enough for both Hamilton and me. The world was wide enough for both Hamilton and me.